We're here at GET 2016, the second global forum on emergency telecommunications in Kuwait. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Wim Lambo, who is Deputy Minister for the Ministry of Information, Communication Technology, Postal and Courier Services of Zimbabwe. Minister, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you very much, Max. Now, 2015 was a very important year with the adoption of the Sendai Declaration, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement. How can disaster risk reduction and management help achieve sustainable development, do you think? Now, firstly, I totally agree with you. 2015 is a very landmark year because of the Sendai Declaration. In my view, it carries quite a number of important aspects, which I will touch on later on during the interview. Now, um, let me say right on the onset that what we want is to prevent uh, death of people. We want to save lives. So we need to do everything that, at the end of the day, saves life, not to react when people have died. What does that entail? It entails a certain degree of preparedness. Uh, predictability of uh, the floods or ability to predict disasters and then you inform the communities that disasters are about to okay. Uh, beyond that we need then to be able to evacuate uh, people and ICT plays a key role in all these aspects I have just mentioned to predict disasters, to inform communities and then to inform them about the disasters that they are come they are coming and also to inform them of the preparations to get them out of there. But uh, we want to go beyond also evacuating people. We want them to stay there. This is where now the concept of resilience comes in. The concept of uh, sustainability develop. If we can manage to predict these disasters and to some extent uh, pre prevent them from happening, then people can continue acting their living from the communities where they stay. In my, uh, from a developing country point of view, sustainability uh, is defined through that way. And what are Zimbabwe's major concerns with regards to disaster management? Um, major concerns are, in my view, the number of stakeholders that are involved when a disaster comes. They are not, we don't seem to see cohesion uh, to react to a disaster. First, from a planning point of view, we, we see very little of that. We tend to react to a disaster instead of preparing for a disaster. Fortunately, we know several months before a disaster strikes that it is indeed going to strike. When it comes to Zimbabwe, we are talking about not too many disasters, uh, cholera, uh, that's... Um, diseases, floods, landslides, and fires. We know the months that fires are going to occur. We know the months that floods are going to occur and therefore landslides. So we really can prepare for that. Now, uh, we don't seem to see that. We would want drills, if we have the equipment, drills and simulations of disasters, particularly evacuation of people. We, 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 we wanted to get to a point where the multi-stakeholders are persuaded to understand that as we prepare for the disasters, let us practice together as a group to do exactly that. We are talking about as many as about 14 stakeholders all to be brought together to handle a disaster. That takes a lot of planning. And awareness. And in your opinion, how can we move from planning to implementation and particularly engaging these multi stakeholders? Um, it takes awareness. Awareness at the uh, police level that uh, disasters are here to stay and that we need to prepare for them. Awareness is what it takes for all these multi stakeholders to coordinate effort. It also takes training once equipment has been delivered, training on how to use uh, equipment so that they, they, they deliver the service it's supposed to deliver. We see very little of that again. Um, we are disheartened to note, particularly from a developing country point of view, that um, many people talk about high-tech terminals like Iridium um, handsets. They take these Firstly, they are not well trained, is adequately trained 
to handle the sets. And therefore, at the end, they take them as a stated symbol in their offices. Uh, they are there. They can't use them uh, to alleviate and prevent deaths. Uh, we want uh, the policymakers to understand that they are the ones who are going to supervise the use of this equipment. So they must understand that there is need to periodically, as I said earlier, on, to, to mount drills. And then the operators of the equipment, they also must be very, very competent and to take care of the equipment at the end. Finally, do you think uh, events such as this, uh, GET 2016, are useful in m enabling the joint stakeholders to join forces together? Very. I'm actually disheartened that, uh, as I observed in there, people come for a few. Uh, platforms like this, I take them as a platform to exchange information, to glean information and to understand, particularly from developed countries who have done it. You talk about Japan, you talk, California in the United States. These are countries that are really hit by very, very serious disasters. And they have developed the art. Now, a developing country like Zimbabwe must come and learn how other countries have done it. But unfortunately, you see people hang around just 30 minutes and they disappear, leaving the very countries that are well experienced in the handling of talk to themselves. This is pathetic. We want people to come here and get information and go back and implement what they learn. Um, paragraph 10 of Sendai uh, Declaration says, uh, 10 years after the Yogo uh, framework of action, people still die. And yet these conferences spell it out on how disasters can be pre prevented. But each time uh, officials leave a conference of this nature, where there's a lot of information, they go back and they do nothing about it in terms of implementation. That's where ITU can come and persuade countries to implement what they learn. Perhaps to set deadlines, as they did in the, in the second dividend, when it comes to broadcasting, by this date, you must have set up a disaster response centers, things like that, to, to persuade countries, especially developing countries, to move forward. Otherwise, we'll get to 2030 having done nothing. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you very much indeed. That's very useful and uh, very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Too.